So let's, let's talk about money and how people make money and why fiat money is just so sinister and bad. Well, there's two ways to make money. The first is to make more of the monetary medium. So in the case of the trade beads or the slave beads that I showed you before, it was the European settlers that, you know, that could gain money or the equivalent of money just by producing more of it, by going back and um, you know, telling their glass blowers, hey, make us these beads that, and color them with paint and we'll take them back to Africa and get a, get a bunch of stuff for free. Um, and, but, you know, they, they've made it much more efficient now. It's even easier. Uh, it, you don't even have to print it. You, you just, like, put it in a database. It's literally just like a, probably a script that they run or a button that they push. But that's one way to make money. It's to create more of that medium. Now, the second way is to provide goods and services, right? Like, it could be a lemonade stand. It could be, you know, doing a, a driving an Uber car or something, right? Like, you're, you're doing something that benefits people. Now, the big thing about the former is that it does not add to society at all. And in fact, it's actually taking from society. You are, when, when you print more of that monetary medium, you have a certain amount of wealth that's existent in civilization. And when you, whatever you print, you're diluting everybody else's wealth. So in essence, you are stealing from everybody else. It's a form of taxation. And it's, it's a very sinister form of taxation because so few people understand that it is stealing. And of course, you know, they, they utilize this because they're, they're not really earning it. They, they blow it like, uh, you know, like, I, I don't know how many of you guys have been to a casino, but when you, when you win a lot of money, there's a tendency for people to be extremely generous, right? And it's because they know they didn't really earn it. And that, that's kind of the mentality that a lot of these people have. The latter adds to society, right? When you have entrepreneurship, when you have innovation, you're actually adding to something. Because by definition, if somebody's willing to pay you, that means you're either doing it, doing something completely new, providing some sort of new good, or you're doing it better, faster, cheaper, more conveniently, something. You're doing something better. And you are adding to the wealth of civilization. You are growing the pie instead of finding your niche. You are growing the pie, right? And that, that's exactly what makes civilization grow. The thing is, when there's easy money, a lot of people go towards the former. They want to get into the money production business. And when there's hard money, well, they don't really have a choice. They, they, they go towards the latter. I mean, think about the last 40 years. Where have the best and the brightest people from the best colleges around the world, what have they been doing? Where do they go and find jobs? Investment banking, that's right, right? They go and try to get into the money production business. They're trying to rent seek off of money production. It, we, we could probably be on Mars by now if those people instead went and tried to like create value for everybody. Instead, they've been rent seeking. They've been doing things that aren't really contributing. When there's hard money though, um, you know, like, Producing gold or something like that, or producing bitcoins, that, that's really hard. And it, it requires a very specialized skill set. And that, that, that means that most people aren't going to go into it unless you happen to have that particular skill set. Maybe you're very good at digging for gold, right? But if you, if you don't have that skill set, you're going to go do something else because it's much more profitable for you. And that's what people end up doing in a hard money civilization. And when more people do that, that's how civilization gets built. That's, that's what makes everything better. Now, I was, uh, I was born in Seoul, Korea, uh, back in 1976. So you guys know how old I am. Um, and even back then, it was very different. But uh, I found this picture of, of what Seoul looked like back in 1900 and what it looks like now. right? This happened because people pursued entrepreneurship, because people pursued adding value to civilization. When you stop doing that, it starts to collapse. So there, there's a buildup during a hard money civilization, and there's a teardown during an easy money civilization. Right? 
And this, this is very indicative of that. All right, so let's talk about the revolution. Bitcoin is that revolution. Bitcoin is that revolution. And the reason why it's a revolution is because we get property rights. We get property rights. See, um, you are, with Bitcoin, you are sovereign over your own coins. You are sovereign over your own money. But with fiat money, you're not. In a sense, you are not sovereign over your money. If you have money in your bank right now, your government can probably take it away. They can accuse you of terrorism, you know, drugs, child porn, something. They can, they can probably take it away. And, and if you were a uh, part of Cyprus, they just took it away regardless of what you did. So it's entirely possible that they could take it away at any time. Even if you have your money under a mattress, they can take it away. By inflating away your money, or doing what India did, they just said your bills are no good. <laughs> it's, it's entirely possible. But with Bitcoin, you have property rights over your own money. They're yours. They can't take it away. You could pay 17 pieces. You could do all sorts of things to keep your, keep your money. And there, there's, and they, and now it takes a lot of effort to do that, but they can't take it away. They can't take it away. And this is what's so great about it. It gives us long-term cer certainty. Long-term certainty. A lot of people think that capitalism 